Konnichiwa, minasan. Welcome to Anton in Japan, the final house tour of the house I renovated in Sangenjaya in Tokyo. 87 year old, spent about a year, a lot of money into renovating this. And the two most frequent asked questions on this channel is, can we have a house tour of your house? I'll give it to you in this video. The second one is, are you PewDiePie? And I'm not. Let's have a look. January morning Whew. In this video we'll show you each part of the house the genkan, the kitchen, the living room area, the bathrooms and then the beautiful Japanese rooms on the second floor This room and this house is designed in a Japan way Japanese Scandinavian style Japanese minimalism, Scandinavian functionalism with a lot of wood, a lot of sunlight and a lot of natural elements So here we have in the entrance a beautiful old, not old, a beautiful lamp. I envisioned the sun here. And then we have the mirror behind me here. That kind of, it gives a little bit more depth having that one. And then a famous string, Tilla here. It's called string, sorry about the mess here. And also this book, obviously it's here. Free houses in Japan. These doors, they're saved as is. Uh, which makes the neighbors, my Japanese neighbors, very surprised that I kept all these dirty details, as they said. I kept old pillars as well, and many of the windows. Obviously, they're not 86, 87 years old, but uh, I think about 30, 40 years old. It's the same as the pink tiles in the bathroom. Revive and revitalize a house like this comes with a lot of challenges, but by saving and preserving a lot of the old details, makes it even more beautiful because it's history, right? The living room. Obviously, this is from the Swedish embassy, IKEA. That's also a Scandinavian design piece, Bang Olufsen. And this turns into a sofa bed. Or it is a sofa bed, but it turns into a bed. Easy as that. As I said in Caleb's video, I lowered the floor here dug out tons and tons of dirt. You see where the original floor used to be. Concrete slab underneath, a lot of insulation. Floor heating here as well. And real Swedish oak floor. I originally bought another type of floor, like an engineered plywood kind of floor, but real wood, it feels just different walking on top of it. Gives a warm feeling as well. The same as the walls, pine. This is actually toilet. And this is made out of recycled material. You see the walls, uh, yeah, we used a lot of pine for the walls. And the back wall there, as well as the door. And the door frame is made out of recycled material that were left over after we built the staircase. The railing there on the second floor, you'll see in a minute. And the walls here, I don't know, we probably have 25, 30 square meter of wall here. And then this is just the leftover. Recycled toilets from a hotel in Chiba that went bankrupt. Steve came and installed it. This was incredibly cheap. It's a total toilet from 2017. So it's not too old. I think the house I grew up in Sweden, the toilet is probably from the 80s or 90s. And we still don't have a wash yet. But the toilet is considered old and outdated to a normal Japanese household. Let's have a look at the bathroom as well, or the shower. So these tiles, or Mexican tiles, gives a little bit of color. This is something you have in Japan. The Kyutoki, the hot water boiler. So now it's 50, 48, 50, 55, 60. So when you shower, that's the temperature that comes out from you. Because of the hotel license, we're not allowed to use this one. It's the Oyudaki, the one that kind of recycles the water. Uh, like the toilet, like the, what, what do you call it? The wash basin on top of the toilet that kind of recycles the water. It's kind of a similar thing, but for when you take a bath. A lot of foreigners think it's a bit unhygienic, but Japanese people do it. This is a cool place. Save the old pink tiles. Added some sunoko, hired this one. The old one, the old uh, blender, mixer, was 
probably on this height. And now it's on a more convenient height, I think. Painting this one was a pain. Mm, yes. <laughs> it smells so strong, so bad. Also tiling here was pretty crazy. But I think it turned out pretty well. So maybe tell us from the beginning of the history of this house. So this house was built in 1936, Showa Junina, which is before the war. This area of Tokyo didn't burn down. Uh, the neighboring houses, some of them are also very old. And this house was 10 years abandoned, Akia for 10 years. The previous owner passed away and the daughters and sons inherited it. And they didn't know that anyone wanted to do DIY and renovation of this house. I bought it with all the things inside and I got a pretty good picture of who these people were. They were loving people, liked to travel, and they had things everywhere. I saw a documentary yesterday about minimalism on Netflix and that the average American has 300,000 items in their household. This house is not as big as an American house, but they for sure had tens of thousands of items here. These are all handmade. Making the frame was incredibly hard. Douglas Pinewood. Douglas... Is in saunas, right? Yeah, Sauna. I think they're using us. Maybe in American saunas. They're very similar stuff. And I love pine. It's cheap. A bit soft, but pretty cool. This is a small oasis. Recycled wood. This one I bought and I made a TV commercial here, actually. Built like an outdoor space here. And then I redid it and turned it into a bar. My birthday party. But other than that, I haven't done too much things here. Yeah, let me show you the staircase and the kitchen as well. This is probably the proudest place of this house. Seven meter up in the ceiling, fully equipped kitchen, and you have a view of the beautiful staircase. So, um, kitchen made out of cabinets. And what's different from a normal Japanese kitchen is that I have a built-in oven, and I also have a dishwasher, 60 centimeters wide, exactly as I had in the kitchen I grew up in, in Sweden. It's eco-friendly, it's sustainable or more sustainable. You're using less water by using a dishwasher than actually washing dishes by hand. And a lot of Japanese friends of mine are getting really surprised when I'm telling them this fact. The first time ever I'm working with a porcelain, what do you call it? It's yeah. the first time in my life I'm working with a porcelain basin, but I think it, it fits really well with the 15 square meters subway tiles. Fun fact, when we started making these subway tiles and we started doing the tiling, we started with this piece here because of the weird angles here. To make it look good, you have to start somewhere and then use that as a reference point when you build up. And in my opinion, it turned out pretty awesome. Some old beams thing and things in the ceiling together with this handmade range hood cover. This is oak. This is recycled uh, plywood. Yeah, made out of like recycled material and I think it turned out really great. And then we have the beautiful staircase as well. Look at it. You can even smell it here, can't you? This is probably the most beautiful thing I've ever built, together with Kazuki. The process of building it is all up on the YouTube channel, but I want you to have a look at it now when it's, when it's beautiful like this. This is all recycled wood. This is all Beimatsu, so a type of pine as well. Yeah, this is a reinforced beam as well. Yeah, and all these kanamono, all these metal, what do you call it? Braces? Probably bracings. Braces. <laughs> yeah, so these ones, people have asked me a lot about the earthquake safety. And I built these retro fittings together with Kazuki, my Japanese carpenter friend. I've never seen a carpenter as specific as Kazuki-san. He really works with the details and everything here is thought through. Even these ones, the bolts here that goes in, we tried to hide them as much as possible and I think we did a pretty good job here. So one here, one there. We could have chosen to make, uh, to build this wall in as well, but then we would have hidden a lot of the sunlight that would have reached the other room over there. Because this house used to have walls who went all the way here on both sides of the entrance here. But by not having walls, the house gets more sunlight and it gets more convenient and more beautiful to live in, I think. So this one is one long piece and this and this is divided so it's cut here and if you look at the small details here how beautiful it is it's kind of like a japanese miyadaiku carpenter cut 
I love it. Even at the floor, it was a little bit hard to do the floor and cut around here, but it turned out great in the end. And also like mixing these old details with new wood, it just looks awesome in my opinion. This one's like 90 years old, pretty crazy. All right, all right, all right. So this is the rest of the staircase. <laughs> when we built it, we had to calculate how thick these pine place, these pine pieces were. They're about 12 millimeters here. And it's a small gap here next to the wall for it not to crack and for it not to like sound when you're walking on it. Because the staircase, it needs to be able to load a lot of weight, right? I haven't been sitting here for a while. I'm pretty proud of this place. So we built the staircase, then we added these ones uh, probably a week later. When the second floor was done, we added the railings here. It still smells of wood here. I mean, the house has been done for about eight months. So the original staircase was, the landing was up here. So you can imagine how steep it was. The original landing was a wall here. You came up here and then you entered into a tatami room up here. Before this was, I think, five bedrooms. Now it's only three, but it's more spacious. It's more bright and it's colder in the winter. Yeah, so now we're on the second floor. Uh, the light is coming in through these beautiful windows. They're not see-through as I told you, but they give a lot of nice light anyway, I think. And as you can see, there are no buildings next to here who gives shadow and who uh, blocks the sunlight. So you get a lot of a nice sunlight in here. Another earthquake proofing over there. And then we have these beautiful railings as well. The first floor of the staircase, there was a lot of oak that we used, the recycled, the reclaimed oak. But to buy that kind of wood is incredibly expensive. And this is a hinoki, Japanese hinoki, that's oiled with a German kind of oil. Hinoki is about one tenth of the price from oak. It's a little bit lighter, but uh, at this point in the renovation, I was on a pretty tight budget. So uh, uh, this more wider hinoki had to be bought instead of the oak. This is all Douglas fir wood as well, a kind of pine. You Americans, you will know what this is. Uh, you make a lot of door frames and a lot of uh, window frames and also railings out of Douglas fir wood. It's beautiful and it smells great. Come here, have a smell. Very nice. This room used to be a tatami room. So it was six tatami, size six tatami mat, then oshire and storage over here, right on top of the, on the range hood right there. And as I've said before, this house was only 36 square meter, a one story house when I bought it, filled with stuff. But in reality, it was two stories, about 90 square meters. Now when I removed this, room it's about 79 or 80 square meters i had to pay some money to re-register the house at the municipality but i think it was a great decision removing this room now you can talk with the people someone is down there they slept in the sofa they go up they make a morning coffee and you you slept in this tatami room over there on the futon and you hear someone down here playing music making coffee and you come up here and you're like Hello, Anton! Can you make me a coffee? Can you make me a cup of Japanese tea? And they'll make you a cup of Japanese tea. So this, this part of the house is great, I think. And I'm very happy I did so. With my friend's help and Kazuki's help. What I'm about to show you now, these two rooms are tatami rooms and Japanese media love these rooms. I have an article out this week from Asahi Shimbun. It's a full page about the future of Japan. And the cameraman and the editors that came here to shoot, they liked the first floor, obviously, but these two rooms, they were kind of obsessed with them. And they said that these will be the main feature. They all thought it was funny that foreigners appreciate Japanese culture more than they do. I don't know if that's true or not, but I really appreciate these two rooms. The idea was to salvage and use as much as you could of the old features. That's one of the original lamps. 
I haven't touched it at all because the, uh, the electrician changed the cables of it. These doors are original as well. I just redid all the these ones. And if you're a foreigner like me, like my family, like my friends back home in Sweden, like my American friends, if this would have been paper, I think we would have all tick and made some holes here because we have never seen these beautiful doors before. Come on, have a look here. So things I haven't changed in this house. I wanted to keep the tea window that was over there. I wanted to keep an old newspaper from 1936 that was right under the staircase here on the wall. And I also wanted to keep a beautiful pillar that was in yeah, basically right where the Bang & Olufsen TV is. But making a house, gutting a house and then planning it. I think it's hard to plan a house before you've actually gutted it. So I had to gut it. I saved these three items, but then how can I explain this? When you got something and then after you've gutted it, then you have a more clear vision of what you actually want to make and what you actually want to create. And I don't think those items would have fit very well with this stuff. With that said, I kept the two Japanese tatami rooms upstairs and a lot of the pillars, the pink tiles, and made them as visible as possible, mixing old with new. And I think it turned out really beautiful. Double bed, new sheets. Uh, the room here is uh, is painted white. It was a carpet here in the beginning, covering the old tatami mats. Uh, I took out the carpet. I made the floor straight because it wasn't really that straight. The local tatami guy, Nami guy son, he came to change the tatamis. Every time you change the tatami, you get like a portfolio kind of. Uh, book and you can decide the color of the tatami of the straws and the heading these green ones that's what i chose in the end i think it will age really nicely you could choose blue you, sh you could choose yellow you could choose without heady as well yeah that's another great thing with it. Uh, having tatami mats it's a little bit smelly still it's been about eight months but you can still smell the tatami this is also original, this beautiful Showa style lamp. And the ceiling is also original. Obviously linen, linen curtains, and a little storage in here where I keep extra sheets, extra pillows, and the things you need to survive in a Japanese house. Last room as well where I've kept a lot of original things. But before that, then we have another toilet in here. Same one as on the first floor from this bankrupted hotel in Chiba. The sounds as well. Original, you've seen me doing all of these as well, together with another carpenter friend of mine, Kazuki. Japanese guy, Japanese carpenter who also speaks Swedish and English, obviously. Because this is a hotel with a hotel license, I needed to have a separate wash basin. Only cold water is pouring there though, but that's a criteria to get a hotel license and run this as a hotel or as an Airbnb. You wanna see the last room? Obviously we keep the Japanese futon. This is a Japanese house and according to uh, Kinjo no Namigai-san, the uh, tatami guy in the area, this is the most Japanese room he's seen in a very long time. This is the wa, the Japanese room. Futon here. These are actually two futons layered up on top of each other. You sleep on futons on top of tatami and your back will feel great. Namigai-san changed the Zuma right here as well. I personally like this gara, this painting very much. Feels like nature with all these pine trees and all the, and all the mountains. And obviously these ones. The Kirino Tansu, the Pavlovnia chests, where I found all the kimonos here about a year ago, one and a half year ago. There is not really anything in here. They're more of a feature, more of a decoration, but I find them incredibly beautiful. You don't need to do much. They're aging really nice. You can tell that someone has been taking care of these ones with love. And they still smell as well. Also, Pavlovnia is really light. So if you want to, you can move them around and put them anywhere. 
I haven't moved them at all. I moved them when I made this floor straight because this room was tilting like crazy. Inside of here, a lot of sheets and a lot of linen and also the original Chabaco tea boxes. I had four of them. Uh, I gave away one to Felipe, one of the editors of uh, Brazilian TV Global when he came here and he brought it back to New York, one of these boxes. Pretty crazy, Felipe. I hope you're using it as your coffee table. They're beautiful and they're pretty light as well. I had the kimonos here for a long time too, but I shipped them to my family in Sweden. And I gave them away to some friends who came to visit as well. And then also the the sacred space, the Tokonoma, right here, where my friend Taku gave me a gift, and Uno-san also gave me a Japanese gift, a vase. Yes, this is the house. Thank you so much for watching. This is Sangenjai House, the abandoned house that I bought in Tokyo about one and a half year ago. Spent one year of renovation, turning it into a Japanese Swedish style house. Please check out my Patreon for more details and I have a very exciting project happening very soon. It's another house that I bought in central Tokyo and I'll turn it into another Japanese Scandinavian style house. This house was entirely made in Japanese, the entire renovation project. And I started the journey of Anton in Japan about eight months ago in end of March, 2023. So it was a bit of a hustle turning these Japanese speaking videos into content for you guys. But my next project will be entirely in English from the start with even more exclusive content on my Patreon. Please check it out from link in bio. This is my Sangenjaya house. Thank you so much for watching. I'm incredibly grateful. You've changed my life. TV Global, Vogue, Business Insider, Daily Mail, Daily Express, Tokyo Weekender, TV4, Asahi Shimbun, Fuji TV. It's, it's been crazy. The amount of media attention this house has gotten has really changed my life and I'm very grateful for your support. Keep, make, DIY, cool again. ありがとうございます。